Praise the Lord. The anchor still holds, even after the flu and all these other things that are going by, but praise the Lord. The Lord don't change. Won't it be wonderful when we get a resurrected body, no more flu and sickness or anything to those things, but here at the land is God uses sometimes allows these things for us to be tried. But uh, let's cheer up the best that's yet to come, like Brother Jaime would say. Let's just stand this morning and look to the Lord in prayer. Uh, the, more likely there's needs. I don't, anybody heard about Brother York? Uh, pardon? He's doing quite well. That's good. Uh, yes, that would be, yes. So. He's got the flu too. Yeah, let's talk with the Lord about that, those flus there when we get over there. So praise the Lord. Any other requests as we look to the Lord? Unspoken, yes. Okay. Unspoken. Uh, okay. Let's all bow our heads together, Heavenly Father. As we come before Thy throne of grace, we are thankful, Lord, that we can come before Thee. We thank you, Lord, that you change not. Lord, you've seen this service, seen this day, Lord. We have come to praise thee and to worship thee. Lord, have your way in every part of this service, I pray, Lord. Bless, Lord, those that would need a touch from thee, whether it is in body, soul, or spirit. I know, Lord, that you know all things. You knew it even before we came here this morning. You knew it from the foundation of the world. But, Lord, you wanted us to express it before thee, and we thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, just like I says, Lord, do as you wish in this service. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me see it at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Mike to come lead us in the song service. Shelter. 
Can we do number 67 in the blue book? If anybody has a number, just, just let me know. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now.
song?
Lord. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides. In the red book, 
202 two in the in the blue book. Joyce, do you sing this? things work together? <laughs> okay. D? together for 
Sister Wenda, do you have a song?
If it matters to you, it matters to the master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. He'll whisper peace when your world is shattered. If it's your greatest joy, your deepest pain, if you're really needing an answer, if it matters to you, matters to That the giver and the maker of life is far too busy to care about your struggles and strife. He sees the sparrow falls to the ground. tears that don't make a sound and if you only knew how precious you are in his sight if it matters to you matters to our mind He wants to bear, burden to bear. He'll whisper peace when your world is shattered. If it's your greatest joy, your deepest pain, and if you really need. If it matters to you, I'm glad it matters to our master. He wants to share those burdens you bear. He'll whisper peace when your world shatters. If it's your greatest joy, your deepest pain, if you're needing that answer, if it matters to you, matters to our master. Oh,
clouds of doubt hover o'er me. Storms of life toss me to and fro. There is a place I can go. He's a shield, every tempest.
Everybody happy this morning? We'll turn the service over to our brother. Can everybody stand? bow our head for a moment. Heavenly Father, as we come before thy throne of grace, we thank the Lord for a place we can fellowship, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the things, that, Lord, that you've brought us thus far. And Lord, we know that's not of ourselves, but Lord, it's thy guiding hand that has led us to this place, to this time. Lord, I just pray, use this vessel of clay as you would see fit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. We see it this morning. Where to begin? We are heading towards a time where somewhere the Lord is going to have to move on the scene to a place where the bride of Jesus Christ will know where she's at. And like the message the last time I ministered concerning intellectual believers and getting back to Brother Jackson's message, heat it up and throw it out. It sounds like a, a negative type of a message. It is in the sense that if we're looking at to put people together, But putting people together just on any basis without being the Word of God will go nowhere. I know that um, from the history and how we've seen how things played out in the last 40 years or so, that even in the days of uh, Brother Branham, while God has a messenger on the scene, I mean God-given messenger, not anyone that wants to call himself a messenger, because there's always a lead messenger somewhere, and it's God that chooses the vessel. Brother Branham didn't choose to be what he wanted. God chose him. The Lord Jesus Christ chose him. And as that servant would be wanting to bring back the gospels and the epistles and bring it to a foundation, everybody loved that because those things were already established. But oh, the moment he brought a living word on ground the majority rejected him and the denomination we know how, it, how things have gone. In, it is God, it is the Lord himself. In his word he said he would send a fire for what purpose? 
What is that fire? It's the fire of the, the fresh, divine, revelated Word of God. And what sets the believer on fire, that's what they want to talk about. That's where they want to dwell in. Because it's fresh from the Spirit of God. Who's directing it? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now we talk about the message, the shout. When we look at First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16... It says, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, that's fine. He's coming with a shout. And if we just look at it in its simple form, the Lord's going to be speaking from heaven. And hindsight is twenty twenty. We can see he spoke to Brother Branham. Yes, he did. But does every word that the prophet spoke was, thus saith the Lord? God allows some words to be put in there to fan people to see who would bring the word that was spoken to the scripture or whether they would go off on a tangent with an idea in their minds how things would go. But history, as we see it from 2018, the minute God takes that main messenger that he has on ground, Confusion comes in. Because those were under the ministry of Brother Branham. They were being taught. The intellectual tares knew just as much as the true believers. But once God takes his servant off the scene, then every man that has a platform gets up and start preaching things and start wanting to be to carry the God's word further, which they weren't ordained to do. I got firsthand evidence of it in 1977. God had brought that prophet off the scene. Men rose up like Perry Green, Lee Vale. You all, Frank, they all came out because now there was no leadership on ground immediately to keep everything in check as God, as the Lord was leading the church. And the Lord purposely allowed it to see what men would do, whether they would use their own intellectual mind to bring forth a thought and project what the message should be, rather than wait till God has a man on scene that would start to speak. Now, because God chooses a man. How do you know God has chosen a man? Well, we, we have a name. Then you're in a poor shape to be a child of God. You know by what he ministers and preach. And it won't be for the first year when he's on ground. It takes a while that what's being ministered holds the test of time. The revelation don't waver. The truth remains the same. Now there's no onus is what I'm going to say this morning. Just because someone say, well, I'm this and that and the other thing. If the ministering that you're preaching doesn't back it up, you're not what you think you are. It's that simple. How, what made Jesus to be Jesus when he walked on earth? It's the word that he spoke. Now the Pharisees knew the Torah real well. They knew things of things of the future. But they couldn't recognize the very hour, the word that was right in front of them, they couldn't see it. Why? Granted, the Holy Ghost wasn't given in that hour, but yet simple people receive what Jesus was saying. Now, when we bring this to this time frame here, 
Well, we, that shout, why, what's the origin or the makeup of that shout? Because we know it's a shout, and the Lord's going to say something. Well, it has its origin and beginning in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. That he would show to his servants, plural, in time, his choosing of his servants. And that would not all be done in the ministry of Brother Branham. It will not all be done in the ministry of Brother Jackson. Like the movement today, they don't say it, but that's the way they act. I remember in 1977, well, I thought, here's a prophet that's been preaching. I mean, a major ministry. You would have thought people would have seen everything alike. And I, and I just came to the message was in 1974. So I'd only been saved for three years. So Brother Jackson asked me to come and interpret for him in Montreal because they spoke French. Some did speak English a bit, but they were mostly French. Well, what a surprise. Well, when we talk about bedlam and confusion takes place, there was about five or six different factions that people came to hear an apostle speak. It was, it, some of them was taking the word that came from the ministry of Brother Branham and was projecting a certain thought, which the scripture wouldn't hold. But you had the wild ones too. One would prophesy in the name of the seven thunders, as if that was something. So they went wild and crazy. Now we're talking about from 65 to 77, a space of 12 years. And there was confusion among the whole mix. And they're all claiming to be part of the bride, surprisingly. I mean, the simplest person Understand, if they're not saying the same thing, something's wrong somewhere. You may not have the knowledge to point it out, but somewhere it don't look right. So that's in that first watch. Now let's, now when we're talking about that there would be three watches from the time the shout would start right here till the time the seventh seal is broke it was not known in the days of Brother Branham it was not the live word on ground in his day neither in the days of Brother Jackson but it is in this hour that it is needful to know what has been transpiring from 1963 on up this way here. So now as we look at it, let's turn to Matthew chapter 24. I'll use this as the base. In Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 42, Jesus is speaking about the end time, leading up to the days of Noah, how, t how the rapture is going to take place, one shall, be, one shall be taken and one shall be left. Then he reverts back and he says, after giving them all that parable about the end time that's coming up, he says, watch, therefore... For ye know not what hour your Lord does come. The Lord is smarter than any preacher on the planet. And verse 43, had Brother Branham had been for his day, or Brother Jackson his day, they would have picked it up. But verse 43 reaffirms the things that the Lord has opened up in these last three, four years. 
But know this, if the good man of the house had known in what watch. That implies more than one. Why would he say watch? Because from 1963, when that shout came, God would work in three manners of time to prepare a people to hear something, and there would be a fresh word on ground for each one of those watches for the Lord to come. Now, to show that there is going to be a fresh word for each one of those watch, as we read further, he goes on to say, Think not, therefore, be ye ready in such hour that ye think not that the Son of Man cometh. Why do they don't think that the Son of Man is coming? Because they don't have enough information in that first watch to know to pin it down. Nor in the second watch, although we know more. We know there's a miraculous war, building of the temple, and Ezekiel war. But besides that, what do you know? Really? All the movement of Brother Jackson movement in this hour, they can just point back up to 2004. I see no fresh divine revelation in this third watch. First of all, they don't believe in three watches. And we're going to identify these this morning. He says, Who is a faithful and wise servant that made ruler over his household? Ruler over his household when? Brother Brandon for the first watch. Brother Jackson for the second watch. And there would be one in the third watch as well. Because without leadership, you're going to get confusion. Without leadership, the fivefold ministry, I'm, I can stand on the scripture saying it's not going to happen unless the believers start to see the man that God is using to bring this together. And if a man is being used to bring this together, whatever revelation brings forth, you can't shoot it down no more than you can shoot Brother Jackson's revelations, no more than you can shoot Brother Branham. And it's not Brother Branham's revelation, it's not Brother Jackson's revelation, and it's not this servant in this hour, his revelation. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he's the leader, he's the, he's the head. Yes, they'll all recognize Jesus is the head. And and they say, yes, Jesus is going to speak, or speaks. But he doesn't sound from heaven that we have tuned like an FM radio to hear what's going on. He's going to use a vessel to speak. And I say the majority doesn't recognize leadership in this hour. And there's no way, no how, are you ever going to see a five-fold ministry come to unity. Not by men trying to work together. It's through leadership. I mean, what about Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, all these prophets? Did God use a bunch to try to work his word out? What about the days of the Apostle Paul? What about Martin Luther? What about Wesley? What about the oil message? God has a main instrument that he's going to use. And the true bride will recognize that voice. While the intellectual tear that knows just as much as the believer, he's going to fight against it. And I'm going to give him some ammunition this morning. We are now living in this third watch. Jesus is not going to drop a whole bunch of things after that seventh seal is broke. It's too late then. The bride will have to come to her completion. From 1963, prior to that hour, the Spirit of God was moving on the church down through the ages of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's where the focus was. But after... 1963, the focus is not there. The focus is on Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. If you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, it's not the spirit of saving grace. It's the spirit of prophetic prophecy, fresh word. 
And if you can't see that, then you're not in the, Lord, the ones the Lord is calling in this hour. It's that simple. That's where the Lord's main focus. That don't mean everybody's going to be into prophecy. And not everybody's going to be an apostle to bring forth God's word. Not in this hour. Although there's a lot that would like to be. And, on, and there's some that has been on different, seen over the internet that call themselves apostles. And it sounded good with what the, the revelation they brought for a moment. But it has fell to the ground. It has not stood the test of time. So now in this third watch, where do you find the three watches? It's in Luke, the 12th chapter. It talks about that 12th chapter from verse 36 to 38, 39. The Lord shall descend and serve meat to servants. That's not serving the gospels to servants. The servants has the gospel. Should have been because it had been restored by 1963. If you're a servant of God. But he's going to be serving meat. And the meat is not just Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. There's meat for this time as well. Because you don't recognize it. That don't mean it's not on ground. It's that simple. And I've heard things, well, are you trying to make yourself an apostle? Just because a person says, I'm an apostle, don't make you an apostle. First of all, Brother Jackson will never be in the, the league of the ministry of Brother Brian was. And the apostle in this hour won't be in the league of Brother Jackson either. God will use him for whatever purpose for this hour needs to be served. I'm going to give him some ammunition this morning. The Lord had, over the years, and I haven't... Re now, first of all, I truly believe in the way Brother Jackson brought what a, a ministry of an apostle should be. He holds a plumb line on the word, plus that's the ministry that God will use to lead the church and to set things in straight in order for the church to move on. That's not going to move everybody that's involved in the movement. First of all, if history's, if we read and see history, and if you're not blind, it's always the majority that rejects. Only the few that sees what God's doing in their very day. It got so bad that Brother Jackson went I've heard a message that he was, he was talking about, he was about ready to quit in the earlier days of the opposition from the Branham Tabernacle. But it came to a place, he tried to hold things back for a while, but then he had to identify those that was preaching against his revelation. He spoke about Perry Green. He spoke about Lee Vale, Ewald Frank, Yan, different ones that rose up at that hour in the early days of his ministry. He identified the Branham Tabernacle, what they were doing. It was not, from what I hear from his voice, he said, it's not an easy thing to do. You're there as a, a target on your back. And, they, and all those intellectual tears are gunning for you. When I look back, I knew what my ministry was going to be. 
sort of assistant even when I was doing the Bible studies in the 80s and the 90s. And when Brother Crothers asked me to step in the pulpit, I said no. Because I had seen what had happened to Brother Branham and the things they had done to Brother Jackson. And if I, knowing that that kind of ministry lays in you, you don't really want to step in the platform. Why take all that heat anyway? It's easier going with just the flow. So no sooner that I started... There was three prophecies that came forth. Witnesses, even in this assembly, and when I started ministering, I didn't know how, which way and direction was going to go. I didn't know all the things that I know today. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ that opened up these things. In year 2001, I'd only been ministering a year or two. Sister Riley gets up in the back, the sister that went and brought Brother Jackson here. She gets up. I didn't know what she was going to say. She says, the Lord has given Brother Fred the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Now, wisdom and knowledge is not for being a pastor. That's a prophetic ministry. Brother Crothers. Brother Jackson had informed him, and he told some of the people when I, when I started ministering in 2001 in that area of time. He said, Brother Fred was a chosen vessel that God has chosen. Also in that relative year time of time, Brother Killam sitting in the back, he sees a flame of fire over my head. He's the only one that saw it. But he'll testify to you of it. Did I make these things up to puff myself up with? These things happened. Then here come some prophecies. In April of 2001, my son, I encourage thee this day that thou would find strength to stand to bring forth my word. For it is my spirit that has anointed thy lips. And you can stand this day upon the promise that I, have, that I have been in control and I have led you and directed you to speak these words this day. And that I shall be in you and use you mightily. And I shall use you to encourage my people here and there, wherever you go in the different places that I have chosen for you to go. That don't mean everywhere they had to travel. I'm thankful, Lord, that I didn't have to travel like Brother Jackson did. It says, Be strong in the Lord, for it is I, your God, that has chosen thee and filled thee with my spirit, that thou might stand and proclaim those things that I have called upon thee to speak, and that thou should have the anointing upon thee and the inspiration to know when the Lord thy God doth speak to thy heart, be strengthened this day, for I, that I am the Lord thy God. That's one prophecy. That was in April. Two months later, did I ask for these things? Did I got people, to, uh, well, you, you want to say something so I can be lifted up? No, these things took place. You are the witness. Or you can find them, at, they're, they're in the archives. On May the 6th in 1990, I would say there are times that you don't know which way to turn. And boy, that's true. I can look back and that is exactly what the Lord is saying. But the Lord thy God would have you to look fully into his face. He will give you strength, wisdom, and knowledge. Again, what Sister Riley was speaking about. And I would say unto thee that thou art a chosen vessel unto the Lord thy God, and shall use thee in a mighty way, even in this little town about. The Lord thy God shall use thee in a great measure, and the Lord thy God shall direct thy path, thus saith the Lord. A third one, because, now this is a little later on in 2004, 
as men was jockeying for positions. Little ones of mine, I say on this day, and I speak by my spirit. I say, run into the cleft of the rock. Do not think to put your own ideas in my plan. In other words, don't get messed up in choosing who you want to be in the forefront of things. For I say, thou shalt surely come to, to failure in thy life. And I say, look unto me, look unto me, the Lord thy God. For I say, I am the finisher and the author of all things. I have created all things, and I have chosen ministers whom I desire and see fit. Now, how are they going to be desired and see fit? By what they preach. I say, do not put your own ideas in my plan, for I say it will surely come to failure. God's going to prove this out. Listen to my spirit, for my spirit will speak to thy inner man. For I say, I have called, I have chosen whom I see fit. For I do not put, for do not put thine own ideas in my plans, says the Lord. Now, I didn't broadcast a lot of these things that I've that has come over the years, but I have people that has written on the internet via phone call. This is we have looked at the different ones that have been ministering in this hour. And they said, we find you to have the truth. And we can see that your ministry is that a ministry of an apostle. I didn't ask them to write that in. I didn't ask them to call to say that. They were not people of, that I knew. God allowed those people, there's about four or five of them, that has gotten in touch and said these things. Now, the only reason that they can see that ministry is because of the word that God brings on ground. What has the Lord been bringing on ground in these last while? Now, I'm not going to go back to the early years. But let's say from 2011, 2012. The two days of Hosea is the Gentile church age. I didn't bring that out of the air. In a dream, the Lord showed me. Because in the dream... I could see the picture of Jesus standing in the middle of the candlestick. And the Spirit said, what are you looking at? Well, I said, the seven church ages. And the Spirit says, what does age mean? Well, it's, age, it's time. Well, he says, that's your Hosea 6 and 2. I'm not preaching because Hosea 6 and 2 is a Gentile or church age because it's a nice thought. The Lord directed me to do that. And that's still a controversy in some places of the movement today. Sevenfold light. How that the early church had of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 26 where it's found. Yes, the Jews will come up with the light of the moon into the light of one day. That's when we reach the coming of the Lord. Because that's not fulfilled for them yet. But the light of one day shall be sevenfold at the end time. That has been broadcast ever since, well, I got 2011, but even from 2009. The great exceeding army, where that belongs. Orthodox Jews that are killed in the middle of the week, which will bring about seven women to one man. The angel offering all the prayers of all the saints. That's including those prayers held by the bowls by the beasts and the 24 elders. The time and the season came to an end. 
how that was not a something you have to reach and think real hard hard to find out what it is. Matthew 24, when God opened that up, that because Israel, that generation shall not pass away, there will never be another century. The three watches of the night that we've been involved in the last while. The judgment seat of Christ. Jesus' government starts with the sheep's Divided the sheep and the goat, it's his government. Because when you read it in Matthew 25, Jesus, it sounds like he's doing all the separation himself. No, Brother Brandon didn't touch that. No, Brother Jackson didn't touch that. But then you can hear it across the innuendos, well, who do you think you are? I know what God has called me to do. In this hour, there's very few churches that are standing with the revelation that God brought here. To them, it's false doctrine. Then I have to say they are intellectual believers. Who are these that's been... How can I put it? Despise. They reject. They ignore. They ignore. They try to nullify the things we're speaking here. Christian Fellowship of St. John is one of them. Truth Tabernacle, Indiana is another one. Truth Light in Georgia, the same. And in the last five or, or seven years, there's some ministers that rose up and God quieted them. For the sake of the people, I'm not going to name the names. But there's a reason why that was that way. Because they were speaking against what God was bringing. It's one thing to speak against a servant, but if you're speaking against law, God's word... Sooner or later, God will allow certain things to go so far, and then he'll touch the situation. Well, I didn't come to hear that this morning. Would you rather I lull you to sleep till uh, the rapture comes? And you hear, well, I'm sticking with the message. You even know what the message is. They st- you're like the Pharisees of old. They stuck with the Torah. You're sticking with Brother Jackson's ministry and Brother Brandon's ministry. You do not see your day today. Of all that's in the land, there's only one brother that I can say that sees what God is bringing on ground. And that's Brother Governor. He's trying to go as gentle as he can. To get the move with the sea, but there's resistance. Oh, we're coming together if we all love, if we ignore it long enough, it's going to go away. It's not, it's going to come and judge you. Just like Brother Jackson's word, Judge the Branham movement. I've been listening a lot lately to some of the. Brother Branham's later sermons. And it's there if you pick it up. He's really coming hard down trying to get the people to wake up. Watch out for the intellectual believer. He's so close to the true believer. And the only way you can tell it apart is when he goes out in the field and trying to, to go on its own. Let me put it this way. In the days that Brother Jackson was on the scene, many ministers rose up thinking they could take God's word and bring something forth. Some did, some didn't. And Satan is wise. He'll get the scarce crow to bring out the ridiculous things. 
so that he can hunger down, cause everybody in the circle, look, look, there's fanatic out there. Watch out. Just stick with what we got. Don't venture out. Just stick with, your, with what you got. You are denying the leadership of the Holy Ghost in the believer. It's not because a man says this is thus and that and that and the other thing. It's the Holy Ghost that's in you that will show you things. Oh, he only shows the past. Sorry. He shows you things to come. It's not the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this hour, it's the spirit of prophecy. And if you say if we say we have the testimony of Jesus Christ in this hour, where is he speaking? And another thing to come to realization. But I'm going to stick with something safe. The things Jesus said and the gospel. There's nothing, and you can't find fault with that. No, nobody finds fault with it either. But that just preparing you, the inner man. That don't prepare your garment whatsoever that the bride's putting on. Not in this hour since 1963. The garment that we put on is the garment of divine revelation, fresh word. Now there's other assemblies that I don't know of. I don't know where they stand because there's no platform for them to speak. Now if God's going to have a man to bring things in place, he's going to make a platform for him to speak with. It's not some local little church somewhere and the thing is only moved from there. Remember, the Lord is, wants the church to hear what he's saying in this hour. And the things that God has brought, that there is three watches. That there is a sevenfold light. And when you ask, how come it's not even mentioned or enthused about God, what God brought down? Because they hate it. It's pure and simple. I'm not going to sugarcoat it this morning. They think it's false doctrine. And then when the Word of God pricks them, Oh, well, it's not my ministry to do that. But what makes you an expert to know what is and what isn't and being judge of it? This may be the last time I might be ministering. One don't know. But God's not going to leave this church without If there's ever going to be unity, it's going to be on the divine, fresh word of God. You can try to play with this and the other thing, and well, what Brother Branham brought, and all the things he said, and the things and how to get ready and so forth. You don't even know what the Lord is saying at this hour for you to watch. That's why I read in Matthew chapter 24. Because you don't know what watch he's coming in. And each watch pertains divine, fresh revelation for each watch. If there's only fresh revelation for one watch, Brother Branham had it all. Is that what happened? You know it ain't. The second watch was God had an apostle on the scene. Now, when you talk about men... It's not Brother Jackson. It's the Lord Jesus Christ had to use a vessel to communicate what he has on ground that somebody could speak his word.
Well, now when you, st and you'll hear in the days to come after what I ministered here this morning, when you start hearing innuendos or trying to paint a picture, well, there's, there's a lot of false prophets out there. They're not looking for those in the denominational camp. They're not looking in the days of Brother Branham or the days of Brother Jackson. They're talking about this hour that's affecting them. And if you start hearing those innuendos and things like that, mark them. Because it shows they're not in line with what God has brought in this hour. It's that simple. I mean, I could try to make it, well, you know, it'd be nice if everybody get along. Or, uh, we, we can get to see the same thing. Can you make people see? No. And another thing. During... These three watches of time, as we look into Luke, the 19th chapter, verse 14. To, big, to give a background, it starts with the 12th verse. The carcass. The shout, the feeding of meat. It's all taken place from 63 till the seventh seal. It's all in that same time frame. It's just the way the Word of God depicts what is transpiring in that period of time. And in this parable, you remember a parable only brings so much detail is to show the what's taking place on ground using certain words to describe what's there, but it's not meant for every detail. But there's enough of it to let you know what time you're living in and what's transpiring on ground. And now it's Jesus himself, he says, a certain nobleman went into a far country. He's speaking about himself when he Went up on high. What is that far country did he go to? South America, Brazil, Africa, Europe, Canada? No, the kingdom of God. Now that's important to know. That's where he went. It's not a physical or geographical spot. So he went into a far country. It's the country of the kingdom of God is where he's at, speaking about what did he go there for? To receive a kingdom and to return, to come back. That's just an overall summary statement of what he wants to project. But in it, we're going to see certain things have to be put in a certain order. And he called ten servants. Right there tells you, me that's not the early church he called 12. It would be in the days of the Matthew chapter 25 where he, there would be five wise and five foolish virgins. And but we're going to read as we see, it won't be in the time of the oil message starting in the 1900s. It's right in this hour now. In the watches. And he called ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And said, occupy till I come. All the ten pounds was not delivered in 1963. Nor in 2004. It would be an ongoing process. During the space of three watches that Jesus speaks about in Luke chapter 12. And he says, occupy. Why? Because it's going to be needed to be watchful when he's coming to be ready. Why give these pounds? We have the gospel already. We have the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are these pounds for, Lord? It's the one that's speaking from heaven. The, in Revelation chapter 1, this, the revelation that God gave to Jesus Christ that he's sharing with his servants, that's all happening in that cargo's time. Carcass time, shall you? So now he's delivered the pounds. 
But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. This condition of those citizens hating him did not just only was in that first watch, because we've seen it played out on ground, exactly like the parable says. Because they hated the one that came after. It didn't end with an apostle. The same will be happening in this hour as well. Because that verse 14 covers the same space as the carcass, as the, uh, the shout. All these things that are taking place within that from 63 till the seventh seal. So now, as we see this, now, who are these citizens? The first thing that comes to the natural carnal mind, uh, what country does it come from? They're looking at a physical country. They were citizens of the same country that he that went to a far country. They were citizens of sitting, they were intellectual believers sitting where the Lord was feeding servants. They've been sitting alongside you. While they're growing up, Satan just leaves them alone, let them grow. To be, they're just as smart as you are. But oh, but when they have to start to go on the field, Satan doesn't want God's word to go forward. He always wants to draw it back. Because if he can stop it there, then he knows God's word will never be completed. That's why the Branham movement says, oh no, we got the message, it can't go on any further. And so they stopped there, and, and they went to all kinds of confusion until they have the Word of God, a mouthpiece that has an authority. Not just because he has authority, but the Word that brings forth brings that authority. That could bring them together, wouldn't it? It could do the same thing in the movement of Brother Jackson after he's gone as well. And so therefore, it came to pass, sorry, and they sent a message that they will not have this man to reign over us. That's what's being expressed, but how does that play out on ground? Somebody has to fulfill that during the three watches. Not everyone that becomes acquainted with what God's doing since 1963 is a child of God. And so they're saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. They're looking at the man himself because it's not their choice. And what that man that's saying, whatever watch you're in, they hate what he's saying because it doesn't go along with what they feel should be on ground. It's one thing to hate the man. But if you hate the word that him that's leading the church is speaking on ground. It's a serious thing. And he that sees and knows all things is watching. This move will not come together until they recognize the leadership of Jesus Christ with the fresh word on ground. I'm here to tell you this morning is you're not going to go anywhere. You'll be just another bunch like the Branham bunch and so forth. Or the Pentecostal denominational bunch. How far have you come since 2004? What fresh revelation have you heard on ground? When you ask them for that, oh, well... Well, there's things that are out there. There are all kinds of false things. Look into the Word. If you have the Holy Ghost, bring it to the Word. And then if the Lord is speaking, that Word cannot be defeated. Not if the Lord has brought it. Now that's...
So the word of God, what does it do? He says, I have not come to bring peace on the earth, but a fire. What would it be if it already be kindled? The fire that excites the true child of God, the same fire irritates the intellectual believer. Look through the whole Bible. What caused those that oppose God's word in whatever era of time that you want to look at? Some were on fire for God. Others were on fire against God. Now, I'm not talking out of my hat because I don't have a hat. I know. Now, it's time to identify these things because if it's just, well, if nobody says everything, it looks like, you know, if we can, if it might go away and we might, this movement might all come together someday. You know, we can work together. Working together will not put it together. Who's putting the church together? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you seek his face and see what he's doing in this hour? But you won't do it. You go hide in Brother Brown's message. You go hide in Brother Jackson's message. Well, who are you to say things you're saying this morning? Well, somebody's got to say it. I mean, everybody knows it. If, if I was to ask everyone, is, 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 you see, yes, we're seeing this, but we, we, we can't say anything because uh, we're trying to promote love so everything can come together. You're working against the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want love to put things together, don't look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the Pope of Rome. Is it working for him? Sure it is. He's bringing all those false tears together. All those religions. This is coming to a showdown. The day is coming. And it's not that far off. When the air of the miraculous comes on ground... There's some intellectual believers that are going to be burnt. Because then we'll see the moving of the Spirit as it was in the days of the Apostle. And the Lord will point out where the truth is and where it's not. Till that time, there's not going to be no fear before any of these preachers' eyes. Not even a concern. Because they're feeling that they're going the right way. Yet all along, trying to put what God's brought in the back burner. You may not like my face or the way I minister. That's one thing. But if you hate his word, there's only one outcome. That's why Brother Jackson, and they don't like to go there too far. In order to put this bride together, God's going to raise a man loud enough, speak strong enough, that the rest of the believer, not the intellectual believers, but the rest of the believer will see where it's the Lord is at. And that will bring that bride together. Well, you say, it, it seems like it's, it, it might be eliminating a lot of people. Well, when Brother Jackson came on the scene, how many people do you think is in the Brandon movement? How many think you there is today? They're in the millions plus. If I walk in the light as he is in the light, That's the key right there. Do you know what the light is in your day? Because if you just walk in the light of the past and thinking we're safe and the Lord has moved on further, in reality it's a rejection of what God, God, we don't want you to move any further. And by speaking against God's word, 
The blood does not cover you. Now, if the blood doesn't cover because they're speaking against God's word, I can't see it being a true child of God. It has to be an intellectual believer. I mean, it can't go both ways. So in this hour, we can see those, if all the messages in what Brother Jackson has brought, he's going to have to apologize to the Branham camp. My blood covers you even though you rejected the message for this hour. And you think today that you're different? Well, I don't know what else to do. To sh- I'm doing this for the benefit of the true believers that sees the truth in this hour. And in the days to come, you're going to hear, unless they straighten up, negative. They don't want to touch you with a 10 foot pole. They don't want, not because they don't like, in that matter, they don't like the revelation you're carrying. And like I mentioned in previous sermons, if I am a false apostle or a false whatever you want to call me, use this word. Seek God's face that he would destroy the things that are said. But they can't. Because I know what the Lord has brought. After Brother Jackson had passed away, going to that first convention, I thought, wow, well now Brother Jackson has given enough word that everybody's going to stand on the same thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everything's going to go smooth. And not only that, I can, won't cost me too much, I can go visit my daughter and, and have part of the conventions and everything else. The very first convention. That spirit reared its head. The men that are in Brother Jackson's church, maybe not knowingly, but felt they should have control in the situation because they're trying to fulfill or at least to follow in the footstep of Brother Jackson, which was not the ministry to begin with. And after that, things have been going downhill. While God has a main mouthpiece on the scene, convention is beneficial. And the true ministry that are aligned with with God's bringing, like in the days of Brother Jackson or Brother Branham, everything is fine. But if you don't recognize leadership, another convention is just a meet and greet. You don't move not one inch further. Yes, you may have fellowship with one another. It's one fine to meet one another. But those days are gone. The convention at the Henry School in Indiana. And not by accident God destroyed that high school with a tornado. The one in Georgia in 2009. Yes, God used those things in the past. But now the thing that God is using, as it was in the latter days of Brother Jackson, he's using the internet as a platform to reach his people. Because if you go to a convention somewhere in somebody else's church, they'll only recognize their favorites. Not what God wants to have done. And if it's not for the leadership, then they're not going to go nowhere. 
Mark my words here on out. I would love conventions and things to take place. But what I've been seeing in the last while, God is putting a damper on those things. He don't need a convention anymore because prior to the internet, it was useful. But as God now is using, allowing this media to, be, to go forward, it's through it that ministers through the body of Christ. Well, now I probably might not be here next Sunday either. I'm going for an operation this week, so nothing serious, but it's just that there won't be no get up and go after Thursday, so. So it's not because God has took me off the scene. Uh, he can. But whoever God's going to use in the leadership is going to be bringing the fresh word on ground. And what is meat in due season? In, if you read it in the English word, is meat at the right time. And the meat at the right time is not the meat Brother Branham preached, although he's good meat. The meat Brother Jackson, fine, that's fine. But that's not the meat that Jesus is feeding now. Failure to recognize it only eliminates you. Well, let's just stand and have the musicians come. Now they have enough ammunition to shoot. He called himself an apostle. If there's a true apostle, it's because of what he preaches and the word that brings forth. And if it's a true apostle, it will stand the test of time. Not just be a little flary thing for a little while and then it disappears off the face of the planet. Heavenly Father, I th thank you, Lord, this morning. I realize I might have been harsh, but there's no other way around it, Lord. It's just things that have been hanging in the air for a long time. And now that it's spoken in the open, we all have to decide, Lord, how we follow thee in the days to come. I thank you, Lord, for the things that you opened my eyes to. I can't claim them, Lord. They're from you. And I thank you, Lord, this morning. For the glory and the honor belongs to thee, Lord Jesus, because it's a revelation that our Heavenly Father gave to you to give the servants here at the end time. Amen. claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary Most precious blood stains were made there just for me for
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, precious Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. We thank you for your guiding light, Lord. <clears throat> I ask that you give us all strength, Lord. I'm so thankful for what I heard here this morning. I really don't care what anybody else thinks. Lord, I just thank you for your mercy and grace and everything you've done for us. I know in my heart I don't deserve it, but Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, bless my brothers and sisters, wherever they might be. Any that are sick and afflicted, Lord, give them a touch of your mighty hand. And Lord, keep us safe, I ask it, this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.